Hi there, Lou here. Today I'm talking about the STMicro VL53 depth sensor and point clouds. The VL53L5CX is an 8x8 depth array and it's mounted to a SparkFun Quick Dev board. Now, Quick is a I squared C standard produced by SparkFun and has been adopted by numerous maker, uh, maker companies. This particular sensor is about the size of a grain of rice and can detect uh, between two centimeters and 400 centimeters with about a 15 millimeter um, degree of accuracy, less than 200 centimeters or about 5% beyond that. And interestingly, you can have multiple of these sensors on a single bus. I can imagine sprinkling these all around a robot for example, having several of them on a robot arm so that the robot arm actually understands where it, what space looks like around it and can adjust as needed. Now, one thing that you're gonna to wanna to note is that there is actually a little tiny film on top of here that you're gonna to wanna to remove before you start using it. And of course, there we go. In order to use multiple of these sensors on a bus, you actually need to be able to hold all of them in reset. So you have to ha be able to access GPIO. So in a future video, I'll be implementing GPIO in the wiring API, as well as supporting multiple sensors in this unit. So now let's talk a little bit about point clouds. So now let's talk about point cloud two. Point cloud two is a message that encodes point clouds. Well, what is a point cloud? It is a collection of points in space. These points allow a robot to understand where it is and what space looks like around it. Each point of these point clouds is encoded with a X, Y, and Z relative to the frame of the sensor. So for example, if we have a sensor here, we have Z, X, and Y that points are relative to. Now, if the sensor is pointed in different directions, you actually need to be able to transform from the sensor to the host of that sensor, and we'll talk about that in a future video when we talk about URDF. However, in order for us to be able to take the data off the sensor and expose it to point clouds, we have to understand what the format of a point cloud is. So now let's talk about point clouds. Point cloud 2 is the current recommended format for representing point clouds. A point cloud is a collection of points which contain an R X, Y, and Z relative to the frame of the sensor. So for example, if this is our sensor, we have it's a coordinate system that's centered at that sensor that the X, Y, and Z is relative to. It can also encode RGB, RGBA, or an intensity value that can be used for visualization or other processing. In order to understand what the point cloud binary format is, we have to actually describe it. So contained in the message is a set of descriptors that says, how are these individual points laid out? Are these floats? Are they doubles? Are they ints? How do you interpret them? So in constructing this message, we actually have to create these point field values. So this is how we're going to create that. Say we have a point cloud, which in each individual point has an X, Y, and Z, which are floating point values, and an RGB value. Now for the, Spark, for the VL53, we're not going to use RGB because it doesn't have a camera feed, but for this example, we will. The binary format here is floating point values, which are butted up together, X, Y, and Z, and then an int32 value that is concatenated on the end. So our, we're going to create a point field array which has four point fields. The first one, called X, starts at offset 0, Y starts at offset 4, Z offset 8, and then RGB at offset 12. So now that we've described what a single point looks like, we need to describe what the entire frame looks like. So one of the ways we can do this is by using a height and width and saying we have eight cells wide and eight cells tall, but we also need to be able to describe how those cells are packed together. So one of the values we need to be able to specify is the point step. How far is it between the start of one point and the start of the next one? 
if you don't have to deal with padding, those are probably going to be connected right together. But you also need to be able to specify the, the row step, how many, how many bytes there are on each row. Okay, so now that we know how each individual point is laid out and how the entire array is laid out, let's take a look at that message. So the point cloud two message is defined as having a, a height and a width, a point field descriptor, a description of how those bytes are aligned, big Indian or not, this point, uh, the step between points, the row step, the data itself, and then this final one is dense. And what this means is if, if this is true, this means that there are no invalid data points in this, or in this data. An invalid data point can be it's too close to the sensor or too far away from the sensor. But knowing that the point is invalid can be really useful. So you can specify that as having some set of values as being not a number. Each point field is defined by a type, name, offset, and how many of them are in a row. And this is created every time you create the message. The name of the point field can be arbitrary. If it's unknown by the processor, the field will be dropped out. However, RViz, which is what we're going to be using for visualization, understands XYZ, RGB, RGBA, and intensity, or intensities. It'll look for both for that same value. Okay, so now that we know how this is supposed to be laid out, how do we actually create one and manipulate it? Well, there are two libraries that we're going to be talking about. The first is the point cloud two iterator. This is actually a utility that's in ROS for manipulating point clouds. You create a modifier on your point cloud, you tell it what fields you have, and then you create an iterator on that modifier that allows you to iterate through the array. And this is what we're using in this ROS node. However, I also didn't want to call out the point cloud library, which is a fantastic library for working with bulk sets of point clouds. You can slice it, you can segment it, you can create registration points, you can do um, consensus data, you can look at surfaces, you can visualize it, it's really cool. So definitely something worth checking out. So now let's talk about our specific sensor. This sensor has a 45 degree field of view, both on the width and the height, but it also only has a depth array. So for each cell, we need to be able to compute what the X, Y, and Z is. To do that, we know what the depth is. We know where that cell is relative to its field of view. So we're going to do some simple geometry in order to compute that on both the planar as well as the height. So this is what's going to give us X, Y, and Z. Okay, so now that we've learned the format of point clouds and how to talk and, and about this sensor, let's look at the code for working with it. So I'm going to be switching over to VS Code. So inside of VS Code, we have our main function, um, declare a couple of parameters and initialize the ROS node. Now, if you've watched my wiring for ROS, we're actually using wiring for ROS here, and we're including the SparkFun library for the VL53L5CX. I've had to make some modifications in order for it to work on a shared bus, uh, and I'll talk about those in a second. As we initialize the ROS node, we're going to first start up our wiring API. This uses libi2c internally in order to be able to communicate with the device. The, this particular sensor actually uses two bytes for addressing internal registers. So we have to be able to tell uh, libi2c that because of the way it constructs kernel, meta, kernel structures in order to be able to talk over that shared bus. And we also need to expand out the size of the page. Otherwise, it'll take a really long time to upload the firmware. And in fact, even today, it takes about five or six seconds to initialize each one of these sensors. And then, of course, we start the imager based with the ID of the I2C address. We set up the resolution. And in, this, in this case, I'm saying enable all 64 pads. You can put it in a 4x4 mode as well. 
And then I create the point cloud publisher and pull for data. On pull, once we have data available from the imager, I extract the arranging data, which is in millimeters, and then we construct a point cloud two message. The frame ID is the name of the frame from the launch file, and we timestamp it. Now I mentioned the point cloud two modifier. This is the utility that's provided by Ross for working with point clouds. And I'm creating an XYZ reference only, no RGB here. You can see that once I have the point cloud registered on the modifier, I can then create an iterator and iterate over each value. You can see that we're extracting the depth from the array. And if it's invalid, we're going to not a number it. Otherwise, we'll use some simple geometry in order to expose it. And that's it. That's all the code. Most of the interesting things actually happen in the SparkFun library. Now, the couple of things I needed to do was the Arduino APIs assume that they're the only one controlling the I2C bus, where on a shared bus like the Jetson Nano, they need to be able to stop and start transactions. So I did have to modify some of the code to handle those start and stop transactions, but otherwise it was relatively small changes. So now that we've got this code understood, let's actually take a look at the output. Okay, now I'm switching over to a overhead view. You can see I have the sensor mounted to a machinist block, and I also have a, another machinist block in the frame so that we can show moving that around. I'm going to access the point clouds by opening up the create visualization and selecting point cloud two. Now nothing is actually being displayed here because I don't have a transform from the map frame to the point cloud frame. We're going to be talking about that when we create the URDF. But for now, I know that the fixed, the frame that I'm publishing is called depth. So I'm just going to reset my frame of reference to the depth. And there you go. So this white is a little uninteresting. So I'm going to change the color transformer to axis color. And you can see that it uh, lights up. Now, one of the things you might see is that this, there's a curve here. I'm going to let you in on a little secret, which is this is actually a curve. So I'm actually picking up, pick up the sensor. You can see it go flat. I'm now going to put the another block in front so you can see where that is. And also my So that is the SparkFun Quick Dev Board with the ST Micro VL53 with a point cloud projection available today on the Polyhobbyist GitHub. Thanks a lot for watching.